So we've given this function f of x equals negative x squared plus seven. Find the inverse. Okay, so just like we did on the last one, f of x is like y equals negative x squared plus seven. So you flip the x and the y around for an inverse. And now we have to solve for y. So let's uh, move that 7 over first by subtracting it. Then get the negative off the y squared, multiplying both sides by a negative 1. So like that would put a negative outside of this. And a negative on this negative would make it positive. So now I would have uh, negative x plus 7 there, or 7 minus x if you'd rather. And then I would square root that to get rid of this square right here. So my inverse here, oops, that written a little closer. Square root of negative x plus 7. So then what does that look like? So my x's, the signs have been changed on those. So like a negative x, positive x would go over this way, a negative x would go over that way. But then a plus 7 on my x, that means it's been moved left 7. So like if I came over to this side... It's either that or I could do it where I'm going to write it like this. Negative and it'd be an x minus 7 like that. Um, if you get to some of these where you're just not quite sure, you know, by all means to help convince yourself, just like I'm going to share my screen right now and uh, go over and I don't know what I just did. I got a whole big mess here of screens. Go over and like launch a Desmos to help convince yourself. So I've got a see if I remember this. It was a square root of negative x plus 7, I believe. Let's see, I've got my screen all kind of wonky here. So there's my 7 right there. Notice this one's moved to the right, and so that's what I was getting at up there to put it in the graphing form to see how that moves it. I need to have that negative factored out in front of the whole thing. So when you're back on our problem right here, that's why I was factoring this out. So this is seven to the right. And this is what flips it over the y axis. So my x, instead of going this direction, so then this minus seven would be move it seven to the right here. So it's like that and going this way instead. So there's the graph of my inverse. Um, to find the function, find the inverse and the domain. Oh, okay, the domain and range of the function, the original function right here would be seven to the right. going like that. And so when you do that seven to the right square root graph going like that, that is a, I think it's a C, domain. So my domain here, the X's would go from seven to infinity forever to the right. And my range here would be how low it hits on the X axis. So zero and goes forever up. And then my, this is my inverse here. 
And so that one, it's flipped around my domain. It still starts at the, it goes forever to the left and ends when I get to seven on the right. And my range is still the same. It goes from zero up to infinity. All right, so did I find the uh, inverse? Yep, right down here. Did I identify the domain and range of the original, the domain and range of the inverse, and determine whether the inverse is a function? So this inverse, do you ever see a point above and below each other that match up more than one point? Nope, so yes, it is a function. All right, just double check my work there. Square root of negative x plus seven, and that is what I graphed in, I think when we looked at it in Desmos, wasn't it? Double check that. Yeah, negative x plus seven, that was our graph. And it looks just like that. All right. 